We're at an undisclosed location. <clears throat> Alright, guys, we're gonna get this thing rolling. We're gonna get it cranking. Let's do it. Thank you so much for joining my podcast, Spazzing Out. It is a podcast slash live stream that I do five nights a week, 6.30 to 7.30. Try to be here for 6.30, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights. I do it on TikTok and I do it on Facebook. So if you're just listening to the podcast in your car and you want to catch the live stream, you can check me out at at SpazWAF on Facebook or at Anthony Paz on my TikTok. You can join me there. Or, of course, you can just listen to the podcast. And if you have not subscribed to the podcast, do so now. I need you to subscribe, bro. Get that done. Go to my profile, click on my website, pick your favorite podcast platform, and subscribe to my podcast. A couple things we're going to discuss today. Uh, we, I have a DB alert. What is a DB alert? It's when there's a douchebag in the news, and I out the douchebag, we have a DB alert. Want to talk about Russell Crowe. Um, great news for, for, for voter ID people, for the people in favor of voter IDs. I want to talk about that. I stand for the national anthem, and I stand with Trump on his thoughts on standing for the national anthem. And I have poll numbers that go with that. Um, poll numbers on how people feel about defunding the police and bad news for small businesses. Of course, before I get to any of that crap, I always like to talk a little spilt milk. What's spilt milk? People who listen to this program know what it is, but for those that are new, spilt milk is anything that happens in your life that trumps anything else that's going on in the world. Example, we're going through a pandemic and, and people are getting sick and people are dying. And, you ha and yes, that's very important, but when something happens at your house, like for example, you're taking the trash out and the bag rips and you have trash all over your floor, the trash on the floor becomes more important than anything else that's going on in the world. Someone could call you and be like, oh my God, my brother just died. And I'd be like, yeah, bro, I got a banana peel on the floor. My dog pissed on the floor. My daughter, she, uh, she you know, pissed the bed. That's spilt milk. Things that happen in your personal life that trump the real stuff that's supposed to be important. Because essentially, and if you don't believe this, you're lying, people in general care about themselves first and then everything else. So what's happening at your home affects you way more than what's happening in the real world. It's happy wife, happy life, happy family, happy wife. Now, try to figure out how to weave the podcast into my busy schedule and, and also make it fear for my family. Um, my, my, day is, my day is pretty hectic. I get up, I'm out of the house at about 5, 5.15. I don't get home until 6, maybe sometimes a little bit later, and I go right downstairs and I start doing my podcast. I've toyed with the idea of changing the time of the podcast and doing it in the morning. I don't know if it makes sense to do it in the morning because most people aren't going to be listening. I like doing the live stream part of it. So most people aren't going to be there for the live stream if I did it in the morning. So I've kind of gone away from that thought and be like, you know what? I don't really want to do it in the morning, it, I, I, which I could. But it would really just be me doing the podcast and then posting it. I wouldn't have the live stream. On the other end, maybe 6.30 doesn't work for a start time. Maybe it has to be later in the night. Because it is kind of tough. Uh, and, and I could see Kaylee's side from this. It is tough for her that the second that I get home, I'm, I'm, I'm basically gone. I, I get right to work. And I, I'm, I'm working on trying to uh, come up with content for the podcast. Or I'm working on content or something like that. And I could see how that could be very frustrating uh, for her, because it's like, boom, I'm just gone. Literally all day long, I am gone. Working on Take Junk, working on my podcast. So I'm trying to figure out, for now, the podcast stays where it is. 6.30ish is when we're going to start the podcast. Um, and that's how we're going to do it for a little bit. But I am going to toy with doing it a little bit later at night. And see if that works with my family. We're not going to go away from doing it five nights, uh, from doing it five times a week. I'm I'm dedicated to doing that. I believe that that's the best position for this podcast to be frequent, to be current, on top of current events, and not a week behind doing a podcast once a week and covering stories that don't mean that don't mean crap anymore. So, 
Um, draw, someone said drop it to a half hour. I don't know if I could drop it to a half hour. That was Brad. It's, it, it's not about how long it takes. It's about the time that it happens. It said I just come right home and I go right from work to work and I'm not doing family stuff. You know, and, and listen, family stuff's important. And usually I'm like, all right, Friday, Saturday, you guys got me for family time. I think it, I, you know what I think happened? I think she got upset because I had another idea. I was going to add another night of podcasting. And I was going to have a special edition weekend podcast uh, for Spazzing Out. And I was going to call it Winecast and, or Boozecast. And what Winecast or Boozecast is, right? Winecast or Boozecast would be on a Friday or a Saturday night. And I wanted to do it with Kaylee and... Uh, another female, you know, maybe one of Kaylee's friends, Natalie, maybe her friend, Melissa, maybe my neighbors. And I wanted to sit down, do a live stream and a podcast while having a beverage and talk about topics in relationships. Talk about, um, you know, from me just be the host and just kind of put it out there to the, to the girls, uh, to Kaylee and say, hey, you know, this this upsets you. You know, like, for example, <clears throat> if I'm if I why is it upsetting? When a guy comes home from work and, and that's it, he, he worked all day and he doesn't do anything else. And then I'd let the ladies talk about it and try to get the woman's point of view. Of course, some things would get pretty deep and some things might get a little sexual, things like that. You know, ask them about their preferences about stuff and why they do certain things to get the female side for the guys. Sit down, have a little alcoholic beverage and let the ladies talk about relationships. I thought it would have been a cool idea. I confront, I, I, I asked her um, uh, about it. Um, I asked her if, if she wanted to do it. And then that kind of turned into the ant. We, you already don't have enough time. You're already, um, you know, working your ass off with Take Junk, working your ass off with real estate investment. Um, you're working your ass on your podcast. You want to start a, uh, 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 Jesus, what, uh, what the hell is it called? A, a mattress recycling company. What about us? That's what she said. And, you know, I, I love my family and I, and I want to be there for them. So I'm going to try to work this out. All right. We're, for now, it's at 630 because that's 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 what I'm geared for. I've been doing this at 630 ish for a couple months now. So I'm geared for that. Personally, it, for me, it would suck to do it later at night to do it at 830 or later. Because I got, I wake up early. I, I want to be settled in and be done, but I'm willing to sacrifice so that I could, uh, so that everybody could be happy. But she really wants me to do it in the morning because she just wants it to be done. So I will figure it out for now. This is where we're going to be, but I'll figure it out. Maybe I will try to do it midday or so. I'll figure it out, man. But we're not going to, the podcast will still be here five days a week. I just got to try to figure out the timing so that it works for everybody. Now, having said that, I would like to say something. This is important advice to anybody that's listening. And this is stuff that my, my wife hates when I get into this kind of crap. But this is just honesty. And this is important advice to anybody that is starting a business or doing anything other than working as a W-2 employee. The toughest thing that I have found in starting my own business, here comes my beautiful daughter, is my family. And I know that is surprising. I never in my life would have ever thought that the biggest problem I would have with starting a business would be my family. Now, I'm not saying my family is a problem. The problem is you are ready for the struggle. You have set up and you said, hey, I'm ready to grind. I'm ready to work. But your daughter didn't say she was ready. Your son didn't say she was ready. Your wife didn't say she was ready. Sure, they're going to support you. Kind of like half ass, kind of like, um, you know, you remember Rocky 2 when Adrian kind of half ass supported Rocky and Rocky was kind of half ass training. And then when she finally came out, she was like, go beat him. And then Rocky really started training. It's quite like that in a business. My father tried to tell me that uh, before he had passed away. When I told him I wanted to start a business, my father pulled my hand, pulled me in real tight, grabbed my hand. First thing he said to me, pulled my hands in, looked at my hands and said, you have pussy hands. You can't start a business. Stay at your job. Then he started talking real truth. He goes, Anthony, here's what's going to happen. He goes, you want to start a business with your brothers? 
He's like, you're ready for the grind. They're not. They don't want to grind. They don't want anything to do with working 24 hours a day, anything to do with whatever. And they don't want to have an uncomfortable life. They already have a comfortable life. I walked away from a comfortable life to start my business. I was making a lot of money working in radio. My base salary was about $80,000. I don't mind talking about that. But on uh, any given year, I might make upwards of about 120000 or maybe one hundred thirty, depending on how many um, uh, live reads I would have, depending on how many appearances I would do in a year, and depending on how we did in the ratings. But all, all said and done, no matter what, I was going to make 80000 And that was like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. I'm sure it would be a lot uh, more money now, but I walked away from that so that I could start my business. And I've, I've had Take Chunk now for seven years, and the diff most difficult part of the business has been my family. It has been a grind for them. It has been difficult for them. They've dealt with the highs of my business, where the business was doing great and money was coming in. They've dealt with the lows with the business, where there's mounds and mounds of debt, and I'm working hours that are just absolutely insane. And now they had to do it again. During the pandemic, this has been one of the toughest part times for my business. I, this business went from a point to where I'm, I, I, I have employees, 10 of them, and I have trucks, uh, you know, six of them. And I, it's a well-oiled machine to coronavirus hits, and I get back in the truck, and I'm working full blow again. And I got to sell a bunch of the trucks to stay afloat. And then I start doing all the jobs. And, and it's, it's not, the families are not business ready. So that's my advice. If you are going to start a business and you already have a family, be ready for your family to be difficult because they didn't sign up for the grind. They've come accustomed to some kind of life. They've come accustomed to whatever lifestyle you've provided before you decided to quit your job. They were used to that. And then you said, yeah. We're, we're going to go back to living on peanuts, and we're going to grind, and I'm going to drag you through the grinder. And weaker men, you, you drop out, man. I, I literally, every day, I feel like my life is like living the pursuit of happiness. I, I'll, I'll talk with Kay about it. I'm like, listen, honey, I know it's a grind, but, but it, it, you know, because you've been there when it's been good, it's going to be good again, and we're going to do great. There's my daughter, Presley. And then I talked to her about the podcast. I'm like, look, I know the podcast is a grind, but it is good. I'm good at this. This is what I'm good at. I did this for 16 years. I'm good at, at broadcasting. It's going to be good. It's just going to take a while. They get sick of that. It's tough on them. And it makes them seem like that's all you care about is your business. And the truth of the matter is, it really is all I care about. Not... And I don't want you to take it that way because it's for my family. I believe that I am the person that is going to break the mold of the middle class for my family, for this family. And to do that, I have to break my family. They are conditioned to live, uh, to work for an employer, conditioned to work for the W-2 people. And that's okay. Having a W-2 job is not a bad thing. Listen, lots of people make a ton of money. Like I said, I made good money working in radio. But I want to break the mold. I don't want my family to be W-2. I, I want my family to be Ernie Bach. His dad had to break the mold, and Ernie Bach worked hard, and now Ernie Bach's kids are going to do pretty well. That's what I want. I want to be Joe Kennedy, where Joe Kennedy had to work his ass off, bootlegger or not, whatever, he still worked his ass off, to make his family rich. I want to be whatever Trump back in the 18-somethings, decided that they were going to be a rich family. I'm trying to do that for my family, but they're not up to the task. So if you're going to start a business, you had better make sure that your family is in 100% because it will bring you to the absolute breaking point. You will look yourself in the mirror and you will say, I, it's over. I have to end it. You will find millions and millions of reasons and excuses. We want tits, somebody says. I love it. <laughs> if, you, if you want tits, bro, go to, go to the squire. So I'm just trying to get to that point that the podcast is, is going to be here and it's, and it's going to be here for a while because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do the grind. But my, any business advice I could give to somebody is... Make sure your family's ready for it because it's a fucking grind, man. And if you can't handle your family, if you can't keep them in check, 
you're going to feel because you will you'll break. You will break. I'm not that guy. I, I this business my or whatever that I do, I'll make it successful for them because I love my family that much. I'm doing it for them. All right. And here's a, here's a point. And and I'll give you a, a, a quick my mindset as opposed to other people's mindsets. And I'll use today as an example. Today, I was I was up in uh, Hillsboro, New Hampshire, doing a job. And inside the basement, we were doing a house clean out for a friend of mine. And in the bait, who is an investor, and in the basement was a was a was a old furnace, right? And inside the old furnace is there they're cast iron. Now you could piece these things apart to get them out. They're super duper heavy. You cut them up, and then once you take the sh- the, the shell off of it, there's usually like four sections, cast iron. Maybe they each weigh like a hundred pounds a piece. Um, you certainly can't carry it out by yourself. You know what I mean? You could probably with a dolly or something like that, or a couple of guys. But what you do is you cut these pins, and then it separates. Well, the guys had left to go to the dump, but they were supposed to leave me the sawzall. And I was going to cut the thing up and I was going to take it outside. But they had left. So now I, here I am for about an hour. I had about an hour's time because we, we just prep stuff. And you would think most people might say, oh, whatever, I'll wait. I'll wait for them to get back to get the sawzall. I didn't, bro. I went out. I went out into the yard and I found a boulder. That I could barely, like this thing was massive, dude. It was a, it was a, it was a fucking boulder that I could barely pick up, but I could pick it up enough to slam it down on top of the boiler so that it would break the cast iron at the pins. Boom, 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 boom. But it took me about a half hour to, to get the thing to break on all the sides. But I broke it and I had it all outside. And when the truck rolled up, the guys were like, how'd you do that? You didn't have the saw. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I, I'm not that guy. You can't tell me I can't do something. You build a brick wall and you tell me I got to get to the other side. I, and, and, and if my family's on the other side, bro, I'm getting there. I, I don't care. That's why I tell people all the time, bro, I'll chop a tree down with a spoon. And I might not be able to do it right away, but I could. So you got to believe in me. That's how I talk to my family. That's how you have to be with your family. You got to believe in yourself. Other people, I, I believe that I'm a fucking, that I'm a lion. I believe it. 100% there was no way in hell that I wasn't breaking that boil up with that boulder. It was happening. It, and I was getting it out before they got there and I did. So you got to be like that in business. If you're not like that in business, just don't get into business. All right, anyways, let's move on from that crap. A couple of things that are um, that, that are that are happening. Um, so um, I got invited. That Stan, straight up, Stan, start taking action now. So I was invited... Uh, to be a guest on another podcast, which is pretty cool because my podcast is starting to get noticed. So thanks to my fans, thanks to you guys and the listeners, the podcast is growing. Like I said, I have uh, over 15,000 followers now uh, on my on my podcast alone. Now, I know you guys probably don't see that because I only got like 10 people watching and 8 people, but a lot of people are listening in their cars. So Clown Town Sports Talk Show. I'm going to be on their podcast tonight. So I'm bouncing out of here uh, right at 7.30 because I have to get all the stuff ready to do a communication with those guys. After we record it, um, I'll let you guys know when it's going to be on, where it is, so you can check it out. But again, it's called Clown Town Sports Talk Show. I'm thinking Clown Town means Clinton. I'm in Massachusetts. I'm not sure if these dudes are from Clinton. They reached out to me on social media. I will find out about it. So just check out for that. So here's what we got. We have a douchebag alert. Why don't we just get right into the douchebag alert so that we can move on with the stuff. DB alert is when there's a douchebag in the news and we out that bastard. And because we have no sound effects on this program whatsoever, I do the sound effects. So please, sound the alarm. DB, we have a douchebag alert. DB in the news. There is a major... DB, douchebag, in the news in Pennsylvania. And it's a huge problem because it's a problem for the United States. A 20-year-old, 22-year-old, a 22-year-old, as I would call, kid, a 22-year-old kid, because they are not adults yet, the generation are that are, tw- that are 25 and under are still kids because their parents didn't raise them the right way. So a 22-year-old kid didn't wear his mask at a Walmart 
and an elderly woman got upset with him and said, do you mind? You guys should be wearing a mask. She was pleading with the man saying, hey, listen, I'm someone, she was, because she's old, is someone that's going to get the virus and I'm not going to survive. Not to mention the fact that Walmart has uh, said that you have to wear a mask in the store. So she gets into the altercation with the guy, goes over to customer services, customer service, this dude leaves. She goes over to customer service, says, hey, this is what's going on. While she's at the customer service desk, this DB, this douchebag comes back in the store. Bro, the lady's 70 years old and he spits in her face. He goes over and he spits in her face. Of course, super disrespect. I mean, but that, that getting spit in the face is probably one of the most disrespectful things you could do to somebody. And being spit in the face is like back when uh, you, they had duels and you'd take your glove off and you'd slap somebody in the face. That's basically the equivalent of getting spit in the face. Honestly, the lady should have challenged him to a duel. So, of course, kid spits in his face, which nowadays getting spit in the face, bro, it's like, that's like deadly. That's that that should be considered assault with a deadly weapon because you don't know if you got this guy's got COVID or if he's got herpes or what the hell, whatever the hell he's got. Your your spittle shouldn't be going on other people, especially if you're a kid and you are disrespecting an elder. Now we're gonna get into why this is a problem for the United States. But I, I, first off, just to let you guys know, guy was caught. They found him because uh, they, they it was all caught on camera. He has been arrested. He's been uh, charged with assault and uh, uh, disturbing the peace and, and in my opinion they should just have a law you've been uh, you've been charged with douchebaggery and you, you know and douchebaggery should have some kind of a penalty up up to 10 years you you got 10 years in prison for being a douchebag but here's the problem this is this is this is the big problem with this country and and I blame the parents I blame you you have kids it's your fault I blame you unless you're a good parent this 22-year-old kid, but, but let, me, let me be clear on this. My father raised me to never disrespect my elders. Never, ever, ever. My, my father says, you don't have to agree with these people. You don't, like, just, you don't have to agree, but you can't disrespect them, right? So plain and simple. And my father, by, by this he meant like, hey, look, this dude's 70 years old, or this lady's 70 years old. Just let them say what they're going to say. Say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. If they ask you to put on a mask, but this, this, I'm trying to be my dad for a second, put on a mask. Don't give them any crap. Do not disrespect your elders. Now, should elders be able to disrespect you? Because I used to always say that to my dad. What if they disrespect me? And my father would always, my father, because these are different men, my father would always say something like, well, you know, most old people aren't going to disrespect you if you don't disrespect them. It's kind of a code, a code of honor. That code's probably gone by now. I'm sure when my generation become the elders or when this 22-year-old kid's generation become the elders, they're going to be a bunch of DBs. But I always try to do that to my son, and I think that's a big problem in this country. I'm not saying you have to respect an elder just to respect them. What I'm trying to tell you is be the better man. If you were raised right, and an old person is giving you a hard time about something, bro, just walk away. That's it. You don't have to You don't have to yell at him. You have to tell him to fuck off. You don't have to say anything. You just walk away. I do it all the time with my son, and I do it all the time personally. I've had arguments with my mother-in-law, with my father-in-law, but I don't have arguments with them because I don't argue with them. When they say something, I let them say their piece, and that's it, and I move on. I don't have to do what they tell me to do, but I don't get into a fight with them. I don't yell at them. And even my mom, who, in, in my opinion, my, is, a, is a friggin' lowlife. My dad kicked me in the ass for that. Now, I love my mom, so please don't take that the wrong way. But with, with some of the things that happened in my family, we sure, sure as shit should have booted this lady off into, into the moon. But my dad always like, hey, don't disrespect your mom. Don't. That's it. And that's how, <laughs> here's my daughter. Hi, honey. Say hi to everybody. Hi. All right. So this is a major problem in this country. We're raising a bunch of brats that think it's okay to walk up to an elderly woman and spit in her face. We're raising a bunch of punks. For example, there I, I don't I don't know the whole story behind this yet, and I'm waiting to hear more details, but apparently a FedEx driver um, w was asked for help from a 90-year-old guy that fell. So some so the FedEx driver goes up to the door, drops off the package, and then the 90-year-old guy is is on the ring 
ask, help me, he's saying. I, you know, I, I need help. I fell. And the guy's like, bro, I can't help you. So th th this is a problem, and it's going to get worse here in the country. Keep your eye on this and keep your eye on your kids. I have a 12-year-old son who's at that point where I'm trying to decide whether or not he should be home alone. I think he's old enough to be home alone, and I want to give him that responsibility because I want him to mess it up so that I can show him how to do it the right way. But I'm giving him responsibility, and I'm constantly on his ass about respecting people. And he always comes back at me. Well, if they don't respect me, I don't have to respect them. And I'm always like, bud, that's the point. The point is, when they disrespect you and you show them respect, you're the better man. Always be the better man. Always, always, always. When an adult says something you don't like, you can just take it, don't say anything, Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And then when they leave, bro, in your head, I tell them all the time, I put in your head, you could be flipping them off 90 ways from Sunday. I don't care. But just keep it to yourself. Move on and don't be disrespectful. That's it. Let them say what they're going to say. And that's done. So I just think it's disgusting. I, I think the kid, honestly, what should happen is... I believe eye for an eye. So what they should do with this 22-year-old kid is they should make him go back to Walmart and he should be a Walmart greeter. And all the old folks, what they should do is, uh, you know how they have senior hours now? They should open up senior hours, have this DB sit there and have all the old people walk by and spit on them. I want 70-year-olds, 90-year-olds, everybody just walks by and they spit on them. And you know old people, they have hot dog breath. Have you ever, bro, bro. Old people have hot dog breath. You know what I'm talking about. It's like the nastiest thing when your 90-year-old aunt comes in the kitchen. Like, <laughs> you know it. It's the grossest thing on the planet. Smells like they just ate a hot dog out of boiling water from like 1950. <laughs> and that would be your worst fate for that guy. So line him up. Let him get spit on by a bunch of old people and see how he feels about it. Let's, let's bounce on from that. How are we doing on time? All right. Um, uh, real quick, I want to cover Russell Crowe. So Russell Crowe was doing an interview. I don't know why he was doing an interview, but one of my favorite, my favorite movie of all time is Gladiator. Gladiator is my, uh, Nariam does not have a job yet, but we're working on getting him a job. So I, uh, trust me, that, that dude, I already took so someone. So some, uh, every time I read a comment, I feel like the people who get it, who are reading the podcast miss who are listening to the podcast missed out. Brad asked me a question if Nariam had a job yet, and my reply to that is not yet. I'm trying to figure out how to get him a job or what job he would like to do, but he will certainly be working. As well as he, if he stays home, his jobs at the house are to walk the dogs once every four hours. He needs to do laundry and he needs to do the dishes and take out the trash. Um, but as far as work, that's, that's, that's coming down the pipeline. Um, all right. So Russell Crowe, he, he was doing an interview and he was talking about the gladiator and blah, 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 blah. He was whining about the fact that Ridley Scott didn't get best director, which he should have. The movie got best movie, but he didn't get best director. I don't really care about that. What I care about is I wanted to point out the fact that gladiator is by far the best movie of all time. It is my favorite movie. It's the only movie that I will rewatch. I don't like to rewatch movies. Matter of fact, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. I can't stand watching movies I have already watched, especially movies that I don't like. There are like three, let's, let's be honest, let's be honest, there are three or four movies, well, I guess maybe there's more than that, but there's not many. Gladiator, any time, I don't care if it's five minutes left, if I'm flipping through the channels and Gladiator's on, I'm watching Gladiator. 100%, I'm in. Gladiator is just one of those movies that I could watch five million times in a row. I love it. After that, um, I could watch Caddyshack, but I couldn't watch it five million times in a row. So if Caddyshack were on, I'd stop and I'd probably watch it. So that, Caddyshack. Um, now, Star Wars, I do like the Star Wars movies, but I, I'm one of those that's like, I watch all of them once every three years or something. I mean, I know they have new ones that come out, but for the most part, I'm not up for the for the 24 hour. Let's watch all the Star Wars movies, but I, I will I will watch rewatch them. So there are some movies that I will rewatch, but for the most part, I don't like doing it. 
I really, I don't. I hate it. I'm always like, can't we just find a movie that, you know, that, that we haven't seen and watch that? But Gladiator? I, bro, if Gladiator was on right now, I'd stop the podcast and I'd watch it. Such a good movie. Honestly, it's... I, I, I would, Whatever... I guess the point of the matter is this. Two points. One, bro, don't invite me over to watch a movie that you know I already watched. Because I don't want to watch it. I don't. I, I, I'll pretend to watch it. I won't even pay attention to you whatsoever. I'm out on that. Um, next, it's someone says Step Brothers. Good movie, bro. But I, I don't need to watch it like 50,000 times. And I hate watching movies that I've already watched. Now, listen, I do it all the time with my daughter. I could probably quote every single Disney movie on the planet. I've seen them 5 billion times. I hate it. It drives me bonkers. I just sit there and I'm like, oh, how can you watch the same movie over and over and over and over? And what's worse is they laugh like it's the first time they've seen it. Or they, they, they oh, did you see that? I'm like, yes, yes, I saw that for the five millionth time. I saw it. Yep, I know. Can you believe what happened? Yeah, oh, I know. I, I know what happened. I've watched this movie five million gazillion times. Now, Gladiator, I'm like that. I love watching it, man. Gladiator, I'm in. I, I Rocky movies, there are movies that I will re-watch, right? But Gladiator, I would watch, and then I'd watch it again. That's all the point I'm trying to get, trying to get at. Next thing on movies, though, I one of my biggest peeves, uh, uh, dude, Big Trouble in Little China, bro, I'm telling you, I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't think Brad knew this, but me and this dude, this guy must be my, must be uh, like, bro, are you sure you're not related to me and my brothers? We absolutely, indeed, we love, hmm, indeed, oh, dude, I absolutely love Big Trouble in Little China. Me and my brothers love it. Um, Mr. Burton, you, oh, fuck, dude, I, I, we love it, we love it, as a matter of fact, my buddy Laugh, we, we like to send around a photo of the Chinese guy, the what, yeah, the, which one, uh, of the, the guy whose head explodes right before it explodes, and we like to send it to him, and say, oh, look, it's Laugh getting pissed off, but, uh, Big Trouble, Little China, another one of those movies, I wouldn't watch it back to back, but if it came on right now, I'd watch it, it's with, um, let's see, uh, Kim Cattrall, uh, 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 why can't I think of the guy? It's, he was married to Goldie Hawn. Uh, Kurt Russell. Great movie. Phenomenal movie. If you haven't seen Bigger Tr Big Trouble, um, Little China, re really, really good. Uh, uh, Low Pan, dude. I love Low Pan. Indeed. <laughs> I love it. All right. Another big problem that I have with flicks, though. Don't talk to me. During a movie. I, that's one of the things I hate. So, for example, you're watching something and somebody comes in and they're like, oh, what's going on? What are you watching? Ooh, what, what are you, and they're talking to you the whole time. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen this movie before. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Yes. This is a movie. Denzel Washington's in it. This is what's happened so far. Shut up. It's like watching football. I don't like watching football with Kaylee. I ask him every single down. Oh, what, what was that? What, what does that mean? What happened here? What's going, what, what just happened? What's going on? Ah! I don't know! I'm trying to watch! Hate it. Her mom is the worst with that, dude. Her mom, dude, let me tell you something. Her mom, this lady, will come in, and no matter what, she will stand directly in front of the TV. Directly. She'll just sit there and be like, oh, what movie's this? And I'll be like, oh, what movie? I'm not, I can't see anything. Literally, dude, if I was on my phone, right, and you, you got your phone, she would stick her head between my hand and my face, and her face would come up, and I'd be like, she'd be like, oh, what are you watching? I'm like, well, uh, I mean, I, I was watching something on Amazon Prime. Well, what's it about? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't see it, because all I can see is your fucking face in my face. So, basically, the moral here is, I really don't like being bothered, man, no matter what I'm doing. I don't like being bothered when I'm drinking. I don't like being bothered when I'm watching movies. Don't bother me when I'm watching a football game. Don't bother me during the podcast. You know, just don't bother me. I guess that's like the theme of my life. But you guys know it's annoying that when you're watching something and somebody comes in. And let me ask you this. Here, here's a better question. How long does it take you to watch, right, an, an hour episode of something? Because I time it. I'm telling you, easily, it will take me anywhere from three to four hours to watch an hour-long episode of something. 
Guarantee it. I'll stop watching it. Phone will ring. Got to pause it. I'll stop watching it. Kaylee will come in and, and, and you know, oh, how come you get to watch TV and I don't get to watch TV? So I got to pause it, right? And then I got to not, I, I can't turn it back on till I pretend to wait the appropriate amount of time where I'm supposed to care that, you know, I, I, you get what I'm saying? Like, there's an appropriate amount of time that you're supposed to pause and not do anything to act like you give a fuck about what your significant other just said to you. So you sit there like, mm, is this long enough? Is this long enough? I wonder if they got, is this long enough? Mm. All right, 10 minutes have passed. I think I think that's pretty good. And then you put it back on and they come back and I can't believe you turned that back on. And you're like, oh. And then you wait or your daughter needs something or, or you got to, you just have spilt milk happening the whole time. And then before you know it, four hours have passed and you've watched half the freaking episode. I know you guys all know what I'm talking about. I know you know. Happens all the time. The greatest invention ever is the stop play function on our TVs, but it's also the worst because you can stop and play shit and you will and it'll take you forever to get through something. I mean, legitimately, I've gone minute to minute where I played, I got a minute, stopped it, play, got a minute, stopped it. Drives me bonkers. Yeah, dude, our program equals time suck, 100, 150%. All right, so we got through that. We got to Russell Crowe. Uh, what else should we talk about? All right, let's talk about Trump real quick. We'll talk about the national anthem. All right, so today on TikTok, I, uh, or on TikTok or on Facebook, I don't know which one I did it, but I posted a video of the San Francisco Giants and a lot of their players kneeling for the national anthem. Look, in this country, in the United States of America, we're lucky enough to be able to protest however we want as long as we protest peacefully and not riot and loot and smash windows. And unfortunately... This country protects people's right to kneel during the national anthem in protest of whatever they want to protest. In this case, it's it's racial injustice, or it's police brutality, or it's Black Lives Matter, whatever the case may be. But in this country, they're lucky enough to get to do this. I disagree with this. I, and I don't think there should be a law saying that they can't do it, but I think there are better ways to protest. I stand with President Trump. Now, it, president Trump, I'm, he's a little bit harsh because I don't know that I'm going to go this far, but the president has said, game over. If he's watching a game at the beginning of the game and players nail for the national anthem, he's tuning out. He's not going to watch the game. Now, I can't speak on that for baseball because I don't like baseball, so I'm not watching anyways. Baseball to me is boring. It's slow. It takes too long. That's a major time suck. I don't have four hours to watch a four-hour game. I don't. What, uh, like uh, of baseball. I do for football, but not for baseball. I hate baseball. Baseball's boring. I wish it would go away. So I don't really care if these guys stand or don't stand. I, I do care, but you know what I mean. Um, 100%. So I just want to be clear on it. 100%. I disagree with people who kneel during the national anthem. There is a better way to protest. We as a country need to need to be united in the way we honor our country. One of the ways we honor our country is the national anthem. We all stand. We, we put our hands over our hearts or behind our backs. Or, you know, if you're in the service, you might salute. You take your cap off. And you show respect to the country, to the very country that gives you the freedom to protest. The very country that protects your right to protest against the government. Other places, other countries would never allow it. Russia would never allow it. China would never allow this kind of crap. You would never, ever, ever, ever be able to disrespect the government, say bad things about the government, and not be wiped off this planet. In the United States of America, you get to do that. You can say you are unhappy with the way the government is, and then you get to vote to try to change it. That is your chance to change shit when you vote. We actually get to vote and we get to change policy if we want to change policy. And that is why you should stand and honor the country during the national anthem. You should get up and you should stand loud and proud together as Americans and support this great country and the ability to be able to protest and support the ability that you're able to change the government Whenever you so deem it's time to change the government with your vote. I find it very disrespectful. And this isn't a military thing for me. I find it, it is disrespectful to those people. But for me, it's not a military thing. For me, there needs to be something. 
just one thing, like the national anthem, like our flag, that we all as Americans put our differences aside and we all stop this bitching and moaning. We all say, okay, hey, I'm not black right now. I'm not white right now. I'm not Native American right now. I'm not Chinese right now. I'm not freaking purple right now. Right now in this moment during the national anthem while the flag is high in the sky, I am just an American and I'm going to stand with all the rest of Americans and all the rest of America and stand proud of everything this country represents. And everything that it represents is everything that I am for. In that moment, just stand together as a country. And then after that, you can go back to your petty differences, and you can go back and bitch and moan about the things that you don't like about the country, and you can protest in the ways that you want to protest. But in that moment, let's be united. When the national anthem is playing, unite as a people. Be one for just a fucking two minutes, man. It's like a minute and 30 seconds. Stand up and honor the country that gives you the ability to bitch and to protest and to do just about anything you want to do without repercussion. Just for a second, think about that. For a second, think, hey... During the anthem, we are all Americans and we all salute the flag and honor the men and women that died to give us our freedom, as well as the Constitution, as well as the Declaration of Independence, and as well as everybody that came before us and is that living, that is living today, that makes this country great. And we're all Americans. That's where it's at for that moment. And then after that, you can do what you want to do. You can pull your game jersey off and they can say Black Lives Matter. Great. You can walk off the field and be like, I'm not playing because of racial injustice. You can rip up your paycheck and be like, ah, screw this crap. I, I hate people. Do whatever you want. But for that minute, minute 30 seconds, we're all Americans. All of us. And we, none of us here are saying we don't support your right to protest. What we're trying to tell you is that, hey, this is the one thing where we're all Americans and we're all united. Go find another place to take a piss, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, go find another way to protest. So that's, 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 uh, <laughs> Bubba Walls found the nose, bro. I hear you. So, yeah, I just want to say that because I, I take a lot of heat. I've been taking a lot of heat on my TikTok and on my, uh, my social media from people telling me that, that I, that I, that I support people nailing and I'm like God oh, I don't support people nailing I, I support people's right to protest so I'm never going to take that away from them I, I think it's garbage that they nail during the national anthem absolute garbage yeah, I know we're running on time we're running on time um all right so there's a poll to go with that this is a crazy thing 52 percent of Americans are okay with athletes kneeling during the national anthem that's an astounding number more than half, more than half the country has said it's cool for them to kneel during the anthem. I don't know what happened in the past six, in the past four years. When, when Trump ran for office, he ran on America. Everything he talked about was America, America, America. And we were proud Americans four years ago. We were hell bent on being great and being American. And now four years later, it seems like everybody's against America. Like everybody's like, forget about America. Fuck America. America sucks. Screw the red, white, and blue. I'm going to kneel. I don't understand that. I don't, I don't, I do not understand how in four years we went from pro-America to screw America. I, I don't get it. And I like, I hate to get to that point to where I get so mad, but if you don't like it here, Go live somewhere else. Really do it. Or do, you know what? Here, let, let, first I'll say this. If you're not happy with the government, vote. Get your legal ID and go out and vote and change the people that are in power. And then if you're not happy with that and you're still bitching and moaning and you don't like the free society that we live in, try to go live somewhere else that's not free for a little while. Go live in a country where there's dictators. You know what? Go back uh, 50 years and go live in Italy under Mussolini like my family did. And they, let me tell you something, my family's real happy living here. They are extremely happy to have come to the United States and got, got from underneath a brutal dictator. I can, I can assure you, very happy to be here. But if you would like, why don't you go give it a try, go to Russia, go to China, go, you know, go let, let Kim Jong-un be your, your leader and see how you like it for a little bit. And I guarantee you, 
you'll be back. You'll be back, and you'll be singing the, the American tune, and you'll be standing for the anthem, 100%. I, I hear you, Brad. I, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, so also, you know, I guess we'll get to that. Uh, one other thing. All right. Tomorrow, I'll, I want to talk about Alabama. Oh, you know what? I'll just say it. Listen, pretty cool. You guys know how I feel. I believe when you vote, you're supposed to have an ID. The 100% to me, the only way voting should be done is in person and with a legal ID. Alabama passed a law back in 2018 saying that you have to have a legal ID to vote. You have to show up with a government ID or you can't vote. Now, that law never went into effect because uh, the NCAACP, they sued. Well, today it got shot down. So now it is law. In Alabama, you cannot vote without a legal ID. I applaud them. I think it's the best way to vote. You have to vote in person with an e with a legal ID. That's how we should have to vote across the board. Show up with your legal ID. Say you are who you are. Cast your boat. Your, your boat. Cast your vote and be heard. Applause to Alabama. I think it's fantastic. Last thing, bad news for small businesses. And I've already I've said this a thousand times on this program, and I struggle with it myself. In New York, a report just came out that 76,000 small businesses are, have closed their doors. Toast. Gone. 76,000. I want you guys to please don't take this as, as an insensitive way. Okay? I don't mean this to be insensitive. But coronavirus or this pandemic has affected more people than just the people that have died. These people might as well have died. Wait, 76 76,000 small businesses had to shut down. Do you know how many families that's going to affect economically? That's a disaster. And that means there are 76,000 uh, people, at least, that need to go find a job now. There aren't that many jobs. This, this virus has killed people, and now its lasting effect is going to be even worse. It's extremely difficult right now to have a business. I've been struggling with it, and I've been grinding. As you guys know, I got no problem telling you about the grind. I'm a, I'm a grinder. But that's just bad news, and that's just New York, and the numbers are going to get worse. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that upwards of a million small businesses, by the time the pandemic is over, will have shut their doors. And that means one million more people are going to need a job. But I'm ha I, had 10, and I had 10 employees that, 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 that don't work for me anymore. So I'm guessing some of these small businesses had more than one people. So you're going to probably look at another 10 million people trying to find a job because these small businesses have gone away. Don't be, listen, Walmart and Amazon, right? They, they employ the most people in the United States, but they don't really. The biggest employer in the United States is small business. If you took all the small businesses and put them together, that employee pool is ridiculous. It's the biggest employer in the world. Uh, United States small businesses, if they were put all together, they employ, they employ more people than any other business in the entire world. We're going to lose over a million of them. It's going to be devastating. The economic toll is going to be crushing. And you're going to have people who are going to need jobs. It's going to be difficult. But I just wanted to get that point out there um, as to how bad it is. All right, I got to scoot because I got to go do another show. Guys, thank you so much uh, for listening to Spazzing Out. Really appreciate it. I will keep you updated as to when the time of the podcast is going to change and maybe the length of the podcast, all this kind of stuff. We will figure this out, but thank you so much for your support. Please subscribe to the podcast. Have a nice night. Facebook, uh, no, TikTok peeps. Guys, thank you. If you don't follow me, follow me. Tell everybody about the live stream for now, 6.30 Sunday through Thursday nights at 6.30 on TikTok. All right, TikTok, bye. All right, Facebook family, guys, thank you so much. I'll keep you up to date as to um, the podcast. From now on, though, for, 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 for now, it's at 6.30, okay? We'll be here 6.30, 6.40, depending on what time I can get home. Um, I really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you so much. And if I move it to a later time, um, it, it's going to be whatever time I do it, I want to do it the same time all the time. We will figure out what works best. And in the meantime, I will be working on that wine cast thing because I want to do it. I want to do it on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday night. I think it would be pretty interesting. So, guys, thank you so much. Indeed. Say, bro, that's, wait, Brad didn't know this. That's where Indeed came from. Indeed comes f for us. I mean, Indeed was, was a word for years. But me and my brother started saying Indeed because Lopan says Indeed to Mr. Burton. 
So he's talking to Burton and he goes, indeed. And that's how we started saying indeed. All right.